Thank you very much. We had a uh, conference call before the meeting, and uh, several good ideas emerged from that. We had a further conversation this morning. It was interesting that the group basically said, we like what came out of the conference call, and besides that, here's some more. <laughs> so we have, uh, I think I have not eight points here that I'd like to just uh, kind of uh, go through and uh, comment on a little bit, uh, having to do with business. Interestingly enough, in our conference call, the first, the first comment was, be involved with your kid's choice of entertainment. Well, you know, what's that got to do with industry, for heaven's sake? Not much, except that everybody in industry is, uh, I say everybody, an awful lot of people in the business world have families, have children, and they get it. So uh, while that's our last priority as a business group, it was our first priority as individuals. <laughs> and uh, uh, you can't, you, can't uh, uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't even be reporting on that, but it seemed to me it was an important thing. Uh, to me, it was an important insight that families come first. And that's uh, a lot of what we are talking about. First, we, uh, we thought we ought to uh, encourage companies business organizations of all kinds to establish an, an, an acceptable use policy. Uh, uh, we were offered a couple of uh, samples. Uh, Rhonda Haas, uh, who's sitting right back here, and Covenant Eye said that uh, they have a uh, kind of a format they would uh, be glad to share with anyone that wanted to take it to their lawyer and be sure that it was right for them. And that's the way to do it. But an acceptable use policy for all employees, uh, all of their technological devices, their hand and PDAs and phones and iPads and iPods and all the rest of it that are uh, somehow related to the business, uh, there needs to be a policy on their use and uh, some uh, ongoing filtering and uh, monitoring software system, uh, consistent review and feedback and uh, educate the employees as to the harmful effects of pornography. By the way, uh, having an acceptable use policy resonates with most employers since, uh, I think I've heard since I was here that the highest use of, of porn sites is during the day, not at night. Well, that tells me as an employer, <laughs> a whole lot of my folks are probably, you know, uh, part of that big audience, and uh, so from a productivity standpoint, I'm interested. And uh, if I were still in business, so uh, an acceptable policy is a good one. By the way, I checked with State Farm. Uh, how many of you know who State Farm is? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody insured with State Farm? Uh, well, hey, keep sending the premiums in. We, I mean, I'm, I'm in retirement, right? Yeah, keep sending those premiums. The, uh, the. Uh, uh, I checked with, uh, in fact, over the weekend, we were good friends in Ohio on the way up here. Uh, we drove up and, and we were uh, in Ohio, and, and this fellow is a senior executive in the Ohio area, uh, agency executive. And as you, I'm sure you know, if you're insured with State Farm, uh, the agents are all independent contractors. They are not employees. And I said, do we have a, 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 a use policy among our employees. Oh yeah, he said, and it applies to agents and their employees who are not employed by State Farm at all. And I said, oh, and he said, yeah. He said, uh, we, we have the same uh, policy for employees and agents. And he said, I'm sorry to tell you that we've had to terminate the agreements of several em uh, agents in the state of Ohio because they wouldn't get on the program. I was amazed that people would get up and give up their you know, the business they had built. It's like a Ford dealer, you know, selling Ford cars, and Ford says, don't do this anymore, and they keep right on doing it, and now they're not selling Ford cars anymore. And uh, so it, it was, Im I was impressed, and I was pleased to know that that uh, it, it applies across the board in the company I was with a good long time, and, and it seems to me that's a, that's a productive, uh, productivity issue for any company. Secondly, encourage companies to establish advertising policies that prevent the use of ads which are sexually provocative or violent and uh, 
or which uh, support program, and they should support programming free of gratuitous sexual or violent content or offensive language. It's amazing uh, uh, what is uh, fair game these days on TV, and uh, I think people like us, for sure, but I think general public people are aware of who sponsors what, and uh, uh, having your name, your product, your service associated with violence and sexual content, uh, it's, it's, it's just not good business. Thirdly, produce produ uh, public service announcements, PSAs, encouraging consumers to monitor uh, their children's uh, uh, use of mobile uh, t technology, PSAs, directed perhaps to other audiences. We, we, one of our group, as we sat and talked, uh, is an advertising uh, uh, professional. And we got talking about the possibility, Rick, of developing PSAs in conjunction with um, uh, professional uh, advertising uh, uh, people, agencies, and uh, finding uh, public-spirited uh, corporations who'd be willing to sponsor those PSAs. And I think there's something in that for Pure Hope because uh, I think we have the content, uh, contacts at the grassroots level to do it. And uh, PSAs uh, uh, have, have a positive impact, in my view, on the, uh, on the general public. Fourth, educate employees to inform customers. Now, this has to do with a very specific segment of the business community. The people who sold my wife and I, the fellow that sold our... The, the two of us, a, uh, a uh, new uh, iPhone, right? Never once, never once talked to us about the options uh, that are inherent in this little piece of technology uh, uh, as to uh, uh, screening, as to uh, offensive uh, websites uh, or anything of the nature, of that nature. So uh, one of our points was educate the employees of AT&T and Verizon and all the people that sell these things, Apple and so on, uh, to educate their customers, to inform their customers, particularly if they know that the customers have children uh, or they're buying these products for the children, things that they can, uh, they either must opt into or opt out of. And it, sadly, it's more opt out of than it is opt into. And, uh, uh, in my view, if we could sell Largent and his crowd on making it opt out and you had to consciously opt in and that, that put the shoe on the right foot. Uh, another uh, suggestion from our group was to approach insurance companies as to whether or not they're willing to build in price breaks uh, for uh, commercial insurance uh, based on filtering and other uh, policies and so on, this kind of thing that we're talking about. Can we look to the insurance companies to validate that, uh, that there are fewer uh, accidents, fewer liability situations, and so on uh, for companies that use this kind of uh, uh, protection and, uh, and price their products accordingly. We, we thought it would, along with policies on acceptable use of uh, technology and so on, that there ought to be an expense reimbursement policy in place in any organization which excludes any so-called adult business for, for employees and vendors and so on. I asked my friend in Ohio, I said, State Farm have a program that, I said, if you send in a, a, a motel receipt and it shows adult uh, movie, uh, are you going to get reimbursed? He says, if I send in a... <laughs> If I send in a bill that shows any kind of entertainment, I don't get it reimbursed. I said, okay, I get it. That, that they haven't changed much as I thought they had since I retired. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the issue is not adult entertainment in my old company. <laughs> it's any entertainment. But the point is every, every organization ought to have a policy on what is appropriate and not appropriate, and you send a very strong signal. Uh, when you don't reimburse for things of that nature. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, when you find a piece of entertainment that is great entertainment, reinforces what is good, particularly on television, write those responsible, both the head of the network it airs on and the head of the company that advertises it. That was Brian, Wilson, uh, Brian Wells' point yesterday. 
uh, that uh, the, there needs to be a positive reinforcement to organizations both uh, in the entertainment business and in the uh, sponsors uh, sponsoring business uh, to uh, uh, to reinforce the appreciation of, of good good material uh, and Saturday night we're going to see another piece of it then the final one which I think I've already mentioned is be involved with what your kids are selecting on, uh, by way of entertainment and help them uh, make good choices instead of poor choices. Uh, I think Paul Rader is up next, uh, Rick, and uh, you might want to come up and introduce him, but I'd like to come back and speak just a moment when Paul is finished about the, uh, we had some, after the discussion and we got into it being a whole group, then we had a couple more points come up. So uh, Paul's going to do the education part and then I'd like to come back and finish up. Thank you. Thank you, Roger.